Welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast. I'm your host, Nate Goss, and today we are talking politics. Now, don't worry, things shouldn't get too heated with today's topic, at least we hope not, but I've asked reference librarian Haley Samuelson back onto the podcast to discuss voter education and Cook Library's Be a Voter webpage, which will have all the information you need to be informed before next month's consolidated election. So, Haley, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me back, Nate. All right, so let's back up a little bit. Didn't we just get over the midterm elections last November? Uh, What is this upcoming election that we're even talking about? We did just get through a national midterm election where um, not only were national offices on the ballot, but we also had statewide offices on the ballot and some countywide offices on the ballot. The general consolidated election is all your local offices. So village board trustees, school board, library board, park district commissioners, anything or anybody that affects your daily life is on the ballot on April 2nd. So even though this one probably doesn't get as much media attention, it's actually in a lot of ways even more impactful for those who actually live in the community here. Oh, for sure. If you need a pothole filled or you (laughs) have a question about something that's going on at your child's school, you know, these are the, these are the people that you're going to be going to. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make the point that um, the general consolidated election that is happening now is nonpartisan by nature. So when you run for a local office, you don't run with a national party. Everybody runs as an independent. I see. That's a good point. So even on the ballot, it's not going to say what party anybody's No. Part. So you have to do a little extra research mm. because it's not like you can just look at the person's name and see what letter is behind a D or an R and say, okay, this person is going to express my values and view government the way that I view government. Right. So really, not only is this a very important election because it's it really impacts uh, you at the local level. But you actually have to do a little bit more research because you can't just go in and and vote the party line. There is no party line. This is kind of where our be a voter uh, idea came in. For people who maybe weren't aware that we had this for the last election, what is be a voter? Be a voter is a general kind of clearinghouse of sites that librarians have vetted that we feel are valuable to voters. Whether you are looking to register to vote, whether you're looking at a variety of voting options, voting by mail, early voting, uh, same-day voter registration, we have you covered on that. So we went through government sites and nonprofit sites and found the best information that we felt anybody who's wants to be part of the voting process from beginning to end could look at. So it's voter education from A to Z. Everything seems so partisan right now. Everything seems so divided. People were feeling anxious. So we really wanted to step in and say, as librarians, we can help you find quality, nonpartisan information. These are sites that we feel like with high confidence, we can recommend to you. That's catered really to our library district, right? This is yes. definitely limited to... Uh, within the boundaries of Cook Memorial Public Library District. So the candidates that we feature are going to be people that we know are going to impact the lives of our library users. Yeah. Now, you've already mentioned a lot that's on this page. What kind of things would be very specific to this upcoming election uh, that somebody would find value in that might actually be kind of hard to find? Well, there's a lot of things that are hard to find about a local election. <laughs> okay, do tell. Yes. <laughs> so we have, first we went through race by race to figure out who was running that represents Cook Memorial Public Library District patrons. We went through individual candidates and found what we could on them. And most people on a local election, an uh, easy way to get your message out is a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. So we have links to whoever has a Facebook page that we could easily find. Um, And actually, in some cases, not so easily. (laughs) But anybody who had a Facebook page, we could find. We have a link to that Facebook page so you can see how the candidate is presenting themselves. And this isn't a personal Facebook page, right? This is like an actual campaign Facebook page they put up. Yes, yeah. yeah. So this isn't pictures of their puppy or their (laughs) spaghetti that they made. This is how they want voters to see them. We also have been um, combing newspapers, looking for any articles. The Daily Herald does a nice job of doing some interviews with candidates so you can see where they stand on a specific topic or general topics. 
uh, candidate profiles, and these are question and answers that uh, the candidates choose to do and then submit to the Daily Herald. So we have those. We also have some candidate forms that people attended. Uh, if we could find videos of that form, we have those. So you could watch those hmm. if you weren't able to go. So there's some nice back and forth question and answer. You can kind of get a feel for the candidate's positions on things and also kind of their personality a little bit. Yeah. You know, finding information at the local level really is... It's a lot of work, and so we just wanted to make it as easy as possible. Yeah, because I'm picturing, you know, if just a, a typical voter in these neighborhoods um, would have to do a lot of work to kind of, uh, you know, piece together all of this information, like go to someone's Facebook page, and then if that person happened to be at a forum, then seek out who hosted that forum and find the video of that forum, and yeah. if the Daily Herald wrote about them, trying to figure out where online to find it if it even is online yeah um so then let's get into um you know you're really doing some heavy duty librarian work here what does the research process look like uh on a day-to-day basis to keep this page maintained for the just the general consolidated just for this election just for this election this election i'm reading the local paper a lot (laughs) (laughs) because there is a lot there's a fair amount that you can find online and then there's there are some things that are kind of in back sections that are harder to find. And so I'm looking at mostly the Daily Herald and the New Sun. Sometimes I'll poke through the Chicago Tribune local. or We are linking to anything we can that is readily available on these papers' websites. And then we're using our paid subscription databases. So you will need a library card to get to some of these articles. A few of them, yeah. Yeah. So it's a day, it's literally being updated daily. It's kind of hot off the presses. As soon as we find the information, we try to get it out to you. We have an, uh, another reference librarian, Joe. He had the job, volunteered, brave soul, <laughs> to find all the candidate Facebook pages. And what, what was interesting about that is people use different language. Hmm. So coming up with search terms and exhausting your search terms within Facebook, trying to find candidate profiles was a big job. Hmm. So Joe took the time to look race by race and with a variety of search terms, which is a fancy way librarians say we looked for stuff. (laughs) Sure, yeah. But, you know, what I'm hearing is that we're doing a lot of the hard work for you, for the listener. You know, that you can just go to this page and then head to the ballot box feeling like if you've read some of the resources, some of the links, you're an educated voter, at least for your district. Yes. Um, And... The library doesn't have any dog in any of these political fights. We really just want you to be educated and feel confident going to the polls. You know, and so that that actually brings me to my next question, because we started this in the the last election, the midterm Mm -hmm. election, was when we first posted this Be a Voter page. Um, What was the idea behind the library getting involved in voter education to begin with? I think we're living in some kind of intense times right now, and people are really questioning who and what they can trust. And Pew Research, they do research on a lot of different things and a lot of opinion polls. They have found that continually libraries are a trusted institution. Mm -hmm. One of the last trusted institutions. Yes, (laughs) one of the last and one of the most trusted institutions. So we felt like this was a natural opening for us to step in and say, okay, you're feeling overwhelmed Voting and elections are a big part of American democracy, Mm -hmm. if not the cornerstone. And we don't want our patrons to feel afraid. We don't want our patrons to feel like they can't find information. Uh, We wanted to equip our library users to feel confident to, you know, go out and get involved, even if it's just going out and getting involved through the polls. Mm -hmm. And that they could do that knowing that they were casting a vote that they felt good about and not just... Well, I kind of heard something about this person, Mm -hmm. and I kind of feel okay. So we wanted to make sure that new voters had a place to go that they could figure out the process. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to build confidence across the board. Yeah. Well, it's also probably worth mentioning that we have, we we are a place people can register to vote. We have been for years. Yes. So, you know, and that may be another way where this felt like a natural step towards, Mm -hmm. let's not just get everyone registered. Let's make sure they're, once they're registered, They've got some resources to be educated before they head into that ballot box. That's Um, a great point. And I guess, you know, Lake County 
does a pretty decent job of educating voters as well. Where do you think Be a Voter kind of fits in line with what Lake County is already doing for voter education? Or do you, where, where do you kind of see this still being a necessary thing for our district? I feel like it builds on what the county's doing. I mean, we are really lucky to have a very solid county clerk's office in terms of the information that they're mm-hmm. putting out to voters. Which we link to. We do. We link <laughs> to sure. we link the heck out of that yeah. page. So this isn't a competition really. It's <laughs> no, just, so. no. So we're using the Lake County Clerk's resources, but we're trying to tease out things a little more specific. Hmm. So we try to have very specified links. So you can go to be a voter and know you're going to end up on Lake County Clerks, but maybe not have to do as much searching. Hmm. So yeah, we feel like we're kind of coming coming alongside or coupling with Lake County and Illinois Board of Elections, because that's who runs our state elections. Hmm. They have a lot of great stuff on their site. Yeah. I, I mean, it seems like we're also trying to provide a little bit of context to the information as well. Because it seems like Lake County's site will tell you who's on your ballot, Mm -hmm. but then to have right there next to you some Daily Herald articles and some endorsements and things, it's just going to also give you that extra bit of information, I think. So I can see some listening and thinking, you know, uh, the library getting this involved in elections and in politics, I can see some thinking it sounds like a really bad or at least a <laughs> risky idea for the library to get involved in. Mm-hmm. What, what would be your response to that concern? I'm not sure that I view elections and voting as risky. Mm. Like we kind of already talked about that. It's pretty central to the type of democracy we right. have. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, we are still a civic institution at the library. Exactly, you know. exactly. And like you said, you can register to vote at the library. So this is a natural outspring of a service that we already offer and making and taking it to kind of the next, like, okay, we're going to get you registered to vote. And now we're going to give you mm-hmm. some information of what are you going to do yeah. <laughs> with that newfound ability. Libraries by nature are about information mm-hmm. and about vetting information, but also making sure people have access to information. Mm, yeah. And we know that your time is valuable. So if you can come to be a voter, go down the list and say, I need this, this, and this, and be done in 20 minutes, then like, why wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> why yeah, wouldn't yeah, you? Exactly. <laughs> um, so we're trying to respect your time. We're trying to do what libraries and librarians yeah. do, do the research and provide you solid information, trying to take some of the stress out of where to find good information right now. Well, it makes me think of how, you know, we would help anybody really research anything at the library. And so it's almost like we're just assuming people are going to want to research the election. Let's give them something that's a good resource for that research. Yeah. And I mean, this was something librarians have been doing forever, but it used to be you would come into the library, you'd come up to the desk and we'd hand you a folder of newspaper clippings. Mm, Yeah. It's basically a service that we have been offering, just updated and... a little easier and just for today's user. And it's not really uh, pertinent to this election because, as you mentioned, it's by its nature a nonpartisan election. But for, say, the midterm election, I remember the subheading was that it was a nonpartisan guide to the the 2018 midterm elections. What kind of things did your team do to ensure that this was going to be a nonpartisan guide? We tried to follow... Well, how things were listed on the ballot. So we weren't giving any preference to anybody. And there's a whole process of how things get listed on a ballot mm-hmm. and it has to do with filing and all of that. But, um, so we tried to, we also tried to do a lot of things alphabetically. So it wasn't like, oh, we're giving prime real estate sure. to yeah. this party. They just happened to come ahead in the, <laughs> in the, um, in the alphabet. We, only linked to official candidate websites. We were not going to get into what somebody thought about a candidate. We Mm. wanted you to be able to see how that candidate was presenting themselves Mm. to the voters and to the electorate. So we're not editorializing. No, no. We are saying we are merely presenting this is what the candidate has to say about themselves. We found some really nice neutral guides of just what were the elections about? This party needs to pick up X amount of seats. This party needs to preserve the X amount of seats. So it was very clear of like, okay, why am I voting? How could this impact me? What are the things that I care about? And who represents those? And we also were able during the midterm elections to 
partner with local businesses, and it was really well received by the business community when we came in and just asked, can we hang this flyer? This All it is is about voter education. Yeah. And people were really enthusiastic. They wanted people to get educated. Yeah. And to well, it seems like it might be for. worth mentioning that this isn't even really a get out the vote kind no. of thing. This isn't even us saying like everybody needs to vote or get voting or, you no. know, it's not really a, a, a political push even that way. No. It's just, hey, if you're planning on voting, here's all the information you need. Exactly. Or... If you were thinking about planning on voting or thinking maybe I should, you know, oh, you know, I moved here a year ago. I still haven't registered to vote. Oh, yeah. How do I take care of that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, just even basic information like that we were trying to put out in a non-threatening, non-partisan way. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, that sounds great. So um, after the next election, which is April 2nd, as we mentioned, are we going to keep uh, the Be a Voter thing going? We will. Okay. And... The fun never ends. <laughs> we'll be de- already looking at what 2020, right? We will already be looking at the presidential 2020 election. We will have information about our current president and his reelection efforts, as well as the Democratic field mm-hmm. of candidates fact checking. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. I mean, and, and 2020 won't just be the presidential election, no, right? So we'll no. have some stuff on, you know, the congressional candidates. Yes, and- yeah. We have a senator up for, re-ele- for re-election. Um, then your uh, House of Representatives, your Congress people will be back up for re-election. Yeah. So probably some state senators. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Not, I don't yeah. know for sure, but... Any, so yeah. anything that could possibly be on your ballot, uh, yes. we will do our best to dig up what's available. Exactly. And uh, credible. Yes. <laughs> Credible, underlined, exclamation point. All right, so we talked this entire time about Be a Voter, um, yeah. and, and I don't think we ever actually gave out where Be a Voter is on our oh, website. Yeah, so let's. Totally. we should probably make it – glad you guys stuck with us. Yeah. <laughs> we kept it all for, for the end. Yes. If you are looking for this great resource, Be a Voter, you can go to our homepage, the slides that scroll when you're on the homepage. There's a link through those. For now. Yeah. For now, yeah. For leading up to the um, April 2nd. You also can go at the top of our homepage. There's a tab that says research, and that will bring you to all of our databases. And we are listed alphabetically there in the B's for Be a Voter. And that's really where it lives all the time. Yes. Is on that research yep. page. Yep. And then if you just wanted to know what the actual address of the page is, it's cooklib.org slash be a voter, but there's dashes there. So B dash A dash voter. Um, and to make it super easy for our listeners, the uh, page will be linked in the podcast episodes show notes so you can just click on that if you need to and for our followers on twitter our friends on facebook we'll also be pushing out information that way so lots of different ways to get to the page yes all right well Haley, i just want to thank you once again for putting all the effort in for this be a voter project that we have at the library uh, but also for being back on the podcast you're very welcome on both fronts and it's always fun to be on the podcast so thanks for having me back sure (laughs) All right, so uh, if you want to take a look at our Be a Voter page and get uh, all the knowledge that you need to be an informed voter before the April 2nd election, uh, please head over to that website. We just talked about all the different ways you can get there, and don't forget I will have that linked in the show notes. Before we head out, I'd just like to mention that we do have our general website and catalog, cooklib.org, where you can always search for books, movies, music, articles, events, or a lot of other things that you can use your library to become a more informed person. So head on over to that website, and while you're there, make sure you also take a look at our blog, Shelf Life, uh, which is where a lot of our library staff talk about what they personally are into lately, along with some genealogy tips, local history, and a whole lot more. That blog can be found over at shelflife.cooklib.org. Org. If you would ever like to get in touch with us, ask us some questions, or even maybe give us some show ideas, you can reach out to us anytime. Talk to us on Twitter at Cook Library is our handle, or you can send us an email. Send those messages to webmaster at cooklib.org. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy it, please spread the word by sharing it with your friends and family. Let them know that they can catch any of our future episodes by subscribing in Apple Podcasts or any other podcast platform where they enjoy listening to podcasts. And if you really want to help us out, consider leaving just a brief rating on Apple Podcasts. Those ratings go a really long way in getting this show out to new listeners. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening.